the column of Constantine. In 330 AD, the 57-meter column was removed from the Temple of Apollo in Rome and erected in the square that had been once called Forum of Constantine, one of the seven hills of then new city on the order of the Roman Empire Constantine I. The column was formed by placing eight columns of three tons and three meter diameter rings and a pedestal on each other. When the column was erected by the Roman Emperor Constantine in Rome, a sculpture of Apollo saluting the sun was placed on top of the column. However, Emperor Constantine ordered the replacement of it with his own sculpture following its erection in Constantine Pole. Later on, it was replaced with the sculptures of later Byzantine emperors Julianus and Theodosius. The column was struck by lightning in, 10, in 1081 and destroyed together with the sculpture on it. Alexios Comenius I ordered the reparation of the column and placement of a column head with a pedestal and a big cross on the top. However, the cross was removed upon the conquest of the city in 1453. After the conquest, the column was renovated for the first time after 1470 in the era of Selim I. Later in the Ottoman era, the column of Apollo and its marbles were severely damaged in a fire. Sultan Mustafa ordered additions of the walls under the column and iron rings around it to reinforce the column. From that day on, it has been called Semberelitas, column with rings. The mystery of the column increases with the rumor that some of the belongings of Jesus Christ were taken from his tomb, which is assumed to be in Jerusalem and buried under the column. So there you go, guys. This is some history right here. Man, that last part got me. I don't know if you guys heard. But the rumor is that some of the belongings of Jesus Christ were actually taken from the tomb. And they were buried under the column. I know I'm not a... Uh, a history buff like that i didn't have that memorized if you guys couldn't tell i was reading so hopefully you guys uh got some value out of that i just love that story man even if it isn't real because like you said it was rumored but look how packed look how packed the subways get here man look at that istanbul Istanbul so packed look at that reminds me of uh, New York what else Mexico City what else big ass city right here do they get the stuff for the hookah right there you see it tobacco it's a form of tobacco about to enter a hookah lounge turkey style Look. Look. Beautiful. Look at that. Everybody hooking. Look at all those types of hookers right there. That's a popular tea too, huh? I wonder what it is. Unique experience. Pretty dope. Yeah. His and hers. Props to anyone that could tell me what this is. Looks hella good. Yeah. with cheese. Mm -hmm. Real yummy. Ooh, right on time. This is Iskender 
this was recommended to me a long time ago and I hadn't tried it. But I'm about to try it for the first time. And this is Manti, right? Yeah. Manti, which is their ravioli. Hey, and they don't get more authentic than that. You, you guys hear that in the background. Yeah. We're right in front of the Blue Mosque. Beautiful Istanbul. Another beautiful view of Istanbul. Another one. It's a camera. Camera shy? For oh, you, camera shy. middle of the city another one of those famous Istanbul street cats hey buddy another one of the friendly Istanbuli cats hey buddy check it out guys this is my best friend little kitten that I met here uh, right I, right outside our hotel we get a platinum elite service which means we get free breakfast and we use that to feed this guy so he was so skinny when we got here now he has breakfast and dinner. Oh, buddy. Oh, little buddy. You're my friend. You're my friend and I'm your friend. My little, my little Turkish buddy. How old do you think he is? Like six weeks? My little buddy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, that finger needed a good cleaning. You're right. Come on, little buddy. 